It's December 12, 1984, and the United States Air Force and NASA have a very special Christmas gift in mind for Uncle Sam. In top-secret hangars, they are testing an aircraft that defies all known rules of combat aircraft design so far. This is the Grumman X-29, an experimental fighter whose wings are inverted, pointing forward. As surprising as it may seem, that prototype was not the first of its kind. In World War II, the Germans had designed the Junker Ju-287 project with a similar configuration, although without much success. The fuselage of that Nazi plane ended up in the hands of Soviet engineers, who took the concept to design the OKB-1EF-140 prototype. All the aircraft ran into the same problem, they were highly unstable. In this new military aviation video we are going to learn about all the mysteries surrounding inverted wing planes and why, time and time again, the powers of the world sought to build a functional fighter of this type. Buckle up, because it's going to be a rough ride. If we pay attention to the fighter planes of the Second World War, we can notice that almost all of them had a straight wing structure. But late in the war, as more powerful engines capable of generating more thrust emerged, fully straight wings became a danger to aircraft, like the P-38 Lightning. The higher the speed, the higher the pressure, which translates into an increase in the demand that the air places on the wings. This can upset the balance of high pressure and low pressure that keeps planes in the air. Engineers came to the conclusion that with straight wings it was impossible to carry out flights at supersonic speeds. This is how swept wings came about, the model used by virtually every plane on the planet. Swept wings are ideal for high-speed flight, they reduce drag and can perfectly withstand the brutal increase in pressure generated by breaking through the various barriers. Again, the Germans managed to make a prototype, but it failed to fly and ended up being captured and studied by the Allied forces. Beyond all its benefits, swept wings present some complications, particularly with stalling, an aerodynamic phenomenon that consists of the sudden decrease in lift force generated by the incident current on an airfoil. The swept shape directs much of that pressure toward the wingtips, making it difficult to maneuver at high speed. If a fighter wants to perform a lateral descent, this stall can significantly reduce the aircraft's response. In inverted wing aircraft, stalling does not start at the tip, but closer to the wing route, where the wings join the main fuselage, greatly increasing high-speed maneuvering capabilities. Not only that, but this setup also significantly reduces drag, allowing for much better acceleration times. You see how, beyond being unorthodox, the swept wing design has its positive aspects, especially if you are dealing with fighters or interceptors. That first German model with inverted arrow wings was not born with these benefits in mind, but had a simpler objective, to carry larger bombs. By moving the wing root canal, the Junker Ju-287 could carry larger explosives without significantly affecting the aircraft's center of gravity. German engineers did not find the right materials to carry out this project, its revolutionary design was too advanced for the time, even more taking into account the war context. This leads us to talk about resistance, elevation, and load capacity. In a swept wing design, the air is divided into a zone of high pressure and a zone of low pressure. The weight of the fuselage and the load go in the opposite direction to the lift that each wing manages to generate. That is why they must be built with resistant materials and have a steel beam that serves as the backbone. In the case of inverted swept wings, the situation is more dangerous, since the air that hits the structure does so in such a way that it constantly seeks to bend the wings of the airplane. Unlike the German engineers, the aerospace industries of the United States and the Soviet Union did have the necessary materials to carry out their ambitious projects. Composite materials such as reinforced polymers, carbon fiber and other elements that are especially resistant to pressure and bending. Thus the Grumman X-29, 
and Sequoia Su-47 were born. We started this video by telling you a little about the first steps of the Grumman model, but its history is much more extensive and amazing. The X-29 was built as part of the X-Plane test program, which was expected to produce the future fifth-generation fighter for the United States. The first flight test of the X-29 took place in 1984, and for the next decade the prototype was primarily tested by DARPA for research purposes. During these tests it was possible to verify that the inverted swept wings were 20% more efficient during takeoff, and thanks to the curved design, it burned less fuel than an identical aircraft with regular wings. At this point it would be valid to ask why this technology is not applied to all aircraft, but not even the American engineers could solve the instability problems. Moving the center of pressure behind the center of gravity results in an aircraft that requires constant steering and assistance adjustments, exponentially increasing the risk of accidents. It is estimated that the main computer had to make 40 adjustments per second, an exaggeration compared to any modern fighter. The X-29 program tour left some important insights. In order to withstand the enormous instability typical of inverted wing designs, the aircraft had to employ state-of-the-art computerized fly-by-wire controls. In addition, as we mentioned, it was necessary to use composite materials to manufacture critical parts for the resistance of the wing structure. This aspect is perhaps the most important legacy of the plane, since advances in terms of combined materials ended up being used in jets such as the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II. When we talk about experimental models like the X-29, success does not only refer to mass production, but to being useful for the development of important technologies. One would think that the rival also takes note of the enemy's failures, but Russia ignored the failed attempts of the United States and Germany. In September 1997, the Kremlin carried out the first flight of the Su-47, an impressive experimental fighter with inverted wings. Like the X-29, it has high lift, is highly fuel-efficient, has great dogfighting capabilities, and a longer attack range at subsonic speeds. Despite being labeled as a production-ready aircraft, the Su-47 is basically a demonstrator of technologies that were used in the Su-57 and upcoming Russian fighters. So far, no inverted wing aircraft have made it to mass production, let alone combat. Beyond that, the achievements and technological advantages they present have had an impact on the history of aviation. Before saying goodbye, we invite you to subscribe and activate notifications to be aware of more stories like this. We'll meet again in the next episode of Military Aviation.